I learned pretty quickly that when you become prime minister of any country and not least Australia, that you can have unexpected events and unexpected mm. challenges. And um, uh, that certainly happened. And the, one of the immediate challenges I had was the tragedy of the, that lone gunman who uh, murdered 35 people at Port Arthur. And that happened within six weeks of my becoming prime minister. And it was a uh, slap bang against a, a really challenging issue that gripped the country for very understandable reasons. It's it's a really interesting thing because when people reflect on your leadership, that is a big thing that they talk about in such a positive way, and especially looking at America and all of um, the shootings, the mass shootings that have happened there. And they're so grateful to you to have moved so swiftly on that to change the gun control rules and introducing a buyback scheme. But at the time, you got a lot of pushback. And I remember from your party, Warren Trust said that you were not willing to make, the, to make these little compromises. Why was this so important to you? This was very important to me, and I'll come back to some of the pushback. This was very important to me because I had just been elected with an enormous majority. I had a majority yes. of 44 seats out of 150, which was a huge majority. And this was the largest single death toll from a single shooting incident in history. 35 people at the hands of one gunman. And I thought to myself, um, what is the point of being in power if you're not willing to uh, use the authority of an office such as Prime Minister, which you've just acquired, and at a time when there was an enormous goodwill towards the new government. There'd been a big shift of public opinion, and even Labor people, most of them would say, well, we didn't vote for him, but we'll give him a go. Yeah. And that's normally the attitude. And I just felt if I didn't do something and didn't use the huge majority I had and the moral authority that carried with it, then... Uh, I, I would be rightly marked down as not having matched the national interest. And so I decided to um, go for the maximum, which was a, a ban on automatic and semi-automatic weapons. Um, it was difficult for some people, but it did have, despite the pushback in sections of the bush, it did have majority support. Mm. had very strong support in the cities and very, very strong support amongst women, and not exclusively amongst women, but certainly they, to this day, I still get lots of women who say to me, gee, I, I wouldn't vote for you, my life depended on it, but you, you were right about guns. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that happened to me on quite a number of occasions. But it, it was tough for some of my rural and National Party colleagues mm because um, they had many people who were farmers who had guns as part of their uh, uh, everyday activities. They would say, we haven't done anything wrong. We keep our guns uh, in a safe place. Uh, why should we be victimised because of this lunatic? And that was understandable. But the only thing you could possibly do was to go the whole hog to ban all automatic, semi-automatic weapons. And at the time, I don't think we would have achieved it, what we did achieve without the understanding of people like Tim Fisher and John Anderson and, uh, and Rob Borbidge, the National Party Premier of Queensland. He was the one National Party Premier. And it was tough for them and for a lot of Liberal people who held country seats and we did have the support of the Labor Party, let me acknowledge that. Yeah. They, they were, Kim Beasley was the opposition leader at the time and he was very supportive. So it shouldn't be seen just in terms of the pushback from sections of the bush, although there was, and I think the uh, gun policies I introduced probably helped give birth to One Nation. 